about that fucking gold song oh my god <laughs> hey everybody your boy chris durick here and i'm here with another sabers recap sabers lose two to one to the new york rangers and yes i was at this hockey game and believe it or not folks i definitely felt like i was in new york city because of all the rangers fans um but to get into the game um the two goals were scored by Mika Zibanejad and Alexis Lafreniere. Um, Zibanejad getting his fifth, Lafreniere getting his sixth. Um, they were both off of juicy rebounds by UPL, Uko Pekka Lukanen getting his second straight start. I don't envy him for this game either. You know, I thought he played a sudden or solid game for us. Once again, we got the goaltending and we just couldn't get the goal scoring. Um, but just to get into it, um, you know, went with my, my one good friend, Taylor. She, you know, first time ever went to a game with me and, <laughs> but, uh, anyways, we sit down and we just see Rangers fans galore, even though the capacity is pretty much still dropped from, you know, what we usually see in the key bank center. Um, but it was mostly all Rangers fans, and we could pretty much hear it throughout the entire night. Let's go, Rangers! <laughs> and we tried to... I could tell Sayers fans, we were trying to get a Buffalo chant going, and we just could not get that <laughs> going, especially over the Rangers crowd. Um, but Brett Murray, he got his first NHL goal. Kudos, Brett Murray. <laughs> Beautiful, man, Brett. Um, so fast forward a little bit more into the third period, um, getting into the final minute, um, UPL gets pulled, we get an opportunity and from what it looked like at first, cause we looked, they had to look at the goal again, but it looked like Victor Olsen scored to tie the game. Um, when he shot it, it went off of the, off the, the ass end of, of Georgiev and it hit the top of the net. But apparently Gallant had to challenge it to see, to say that the play was off sides. So looking at the footage backwards and forwards, um, <laughs> uh, looking at the footage backwards and forwards just to see that, yes, it looked like Dowling was off sides, but you look at where the puck was with Victor Olofsson, he does not even play the puck until Darlene has, has bat checked. He's back on the blue line. Nobody's across the blue line except for the puck. And then Olison touches the puck. That is not offsides. But the review, they call it no goal. Rangers fans go crazy. And I am so fucking hot. Hot and heated that if you were to hold a windbreaker jacket over my f over my big fat head, you could probably have floated all the way up to the rafters. So we lose the game. It was a little bit frustrating, but I tried to stay and take a positive out of this game and the fact that we were competitive. We pretty much kept up with the Rangers all game. We just couldn't. We just couldn't capitalize on most of the opportunities that were thrown right in front of us. UPL with another solid performance, even though you know, yeah, two goals, both let off of rebounds. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't really. I don't really hold it against him, considering the fact of the situation of why he's playing for us right now. Also, the fact that I felt like the defense should have been there to pick those up, but we weren't. We were. They were out to launch on that one. Um. But towards the end of it all, uh, Ranger fans, you guys are a hostile environment, especially when you're not in your own home home arena, because they were just relentless, just leaving the building. You know, I, I you know I felt so out of place, guys, especially when it comes to that game. Um, but anyways, 
I did so much screaming and yelling that my friend Taylor's probably looking at me like, God, this, <laughs> I don't know if I want to be going to another game with this guy. <laughs> no, I, I don't think she was like that, but, um, <laughs> but she was just sitting there enjoying the game and that, and I'm there kicking and screaming, getting all pissed off, you know, at some of the opportunities that were there. We couldn't execute them. But anyways, after the game was over, the next day comes and according to the NHL and the NHL officiating, they sent out an apology because apparently um, after uh, they made the call, it was no goal. Apparently, I don't know if it was Toronto or somebody, maybe possibly getting back on the headphones, trying to get into the you know, to the refs going, no, we got it wrong, we got it wrong! Get back on, we got it wrong! Yeah, so apparently they apologized saying that it wasn't offsides, it should have been a good goal. What? 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 After all that, all you could do is say you're sorry? Really? Only in Buffalo, guys. Controversy. Screw job. Only in Buffalo. <laughs> so, I was a little more heated. You know, and just trying to put together everything to say about this. That Why is it that I feel like when it comes to any professional sport in our, in our town... You know, pretty much any professional league, every time when it comes to us, whether it be the Sabres or the Bills, there's always got to be some kind of scrutiny. I don't know what else to say about it. But other than that, home game felt like a, felt like a road game, not only because of the hostile crowd, but it was White Hot Friday. And... I'm already letting them down. I got my... Hey guys, I'm back, okay? Got the right jersey on. White jersey, white hot Friday. Um, yeah, but anyways... You know, all in all, competitive game. Glad they stayed in it. Too bad that they lost. Very controversial way they lo that they lost. But either way, um, a little flustered about it, a little bit. Um, you know, Ranger, you Ranger fans, you know, yak it up for all you like. You know, you got, uh, you know, Stanley Cup contending coach, you know, behind your bench. You know, you got good upcoming players and, you know, goaltenders and Gorgiev and Shesterkin. Shesterkin, how you pronounce his name, I really don't care. Um, some of the best, you got Adam Fox, one of the be upcoming great defensemen. You got Mika Zibanejad, a great center. Chris Kreider, a good veteran. Uh, Capo Caco and Alexis Lafreniere, the future of the team, of the franchise. Yes, we're still looking for an identity, you know, but the fact that you, it, you couldn't really outplay us and it was that close of a game, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Be ashamed. You know, I give kudos to my team for trying to stay in it. We could have had a chance to win. We had the juice. We brought the juice. It just wasn't enough. You know, <laughs> and flailing around, you know, all flustered still about the damn game. If I see Dr. Phil on my front lawn, either I'm hallucinating or I really got an issue. Chris, come out here and talk to me. You know, it's it's not what you're eating, it's what's eating you. I'm calling the cops. Anyway, guys, that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked the video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Tell all your friends. Controversy. It's pretty much the big story in Buffalo. All year. Every year. Every day. Catch you guys later.
Washington, you're up next.